This is the Cryography All-in-One Modular Art Box. And in this video, we're going to look at what features it has and whether or not it would be a tool the miniature painter would want to add to their collection. For transparency, Cryography reached out and asked if I would like a copy of the art box to test out prior to their Kickstarter. So I did receive this kit for free. The set that I received is the same that will be available in their Kickstarter campaign that begins on the 15th of November 2023. The whole modular station comes in this neat little box. When you open it up, there is a box with two wet palette sponges and papers. Below these was the modular station, ready to go as is. In total, there are five sections made up of three different modules. The first module at the top has a deep tray with two pockets, where there are two water pots. Each water pot has a silicone mat for cleaning brushes, a brush rack for keeping the tips of your brush in the water, and another for drying. There's also a little handle built into the center of the module so that the box can be carried. Another module is a shallow wet palette, and the other is a dry palette for paints with sectioned off areas. All of these modules are clipped together with two clips, one found at either end of the modules. They hold each tray together very well with no danger of them coming loose from one another. This also means that the release needs a little bit of force. At first, I was worried about breaking the clips when releasing the modules, but after using it every day for a week, you quickly get used to the design and although a little stiff, you can confidently release the clips without worry. Along the length of each module are clips that allow you to connect them together on your table. It's a little awkward to get these together and taking them apart is even harder. When you have two wet palettes with paint on them and then try to unclip these without causing runny paint to roll around and mix with other paint, it's a bit of a trick. I'm also still scared of breaking the plastic every time I disconnect them, but the module is made with quality in mind and it has been very sturdy so far. What I was most excited to try with these when I got them was to see if the silicone mat did anything for my brushes when I was cleaning them. Well, I found it to be quite enjoyable to wash my brushes and rub them against the mat. It's one of those strangely satisfying feelings to get the resistance back. The brush comes out cleaner as well with a lot less paint still in the hairs. For drying, the brush racks work really well. There are two sizes for brushes and whatever the handle size, it was able to hold all my brushes quite comfortably. You get two racks with a shelf to catch dripping water and two without that allow you to keep brushes in the water if needed without the hairs getting damaged in the pot. The clips on the racks also let you place it anywhere on the edge to find the best place for keeping them. Not only can they be clipped to all sides of the pots, but also the module itself. This has made it very easy to keep brushes at hand without taking up any additional space. I can honestly say that out of everything, these paint pots with brush racks are probably my favorite thing in the set, and I cannot imagine painting without them now. I'll start off by saying it's a lot smaller than I usually like to use, but two together can help get the size closer to what I'm used to, like in my red grass palette. The sponges came in a sealed plastic sleeve. One concern I had with the packaging was that when I removed them, there appeared to be a little moisture in the packet. However, the sponges were in a fine condition. As an initial impression, the sponges seem very good and are quite comparable to a red grass palette sponge, only a little thicker. The paper is designed for many kinds of paints to be used on it. So it's not specifically for miniature painting acrylics, it's thicker than red grass palette paper, but not as thick as my Zolke Mura parchment paper. Cutting some red grass palette paper, I was able to compare the two using the two palettes in the set. Over the course of testing, I did not notice any particular difference between using the red grass paper on the Crydruffy sponge compared to a red grass sponge. The first thing that I noticed was how the paint felt on the paper. On red grass paper, paint moves around very easily and often becomes more watery over time. The opposite was true for the Crydruffy paper. The paint kept its original property for longer, however, would begin to dry when left out in the air. No palette paper is perfect, but the different qualities can be good or bad for different reasons. Here I would like to express what I like and do not like about both types of palette paper to help give some idea of what they are both like to use. 
If anyone is familiar with using red grass palette paper, they may know that it's very good for keeping your paint wet for long periods of time. When I have a long session of painting and I go back and forth with different paint, I can almost always be sure that the paint will stay wet and be workable. The only downside to this is that the paint can become too wet and opacity and consistency can be lost. Often at this stage it's better to add some new paint and use that instead. When sealing and storing a palette with red grass paper, I also often find that the paint separates and becomes even more watery. This often makes it unusable for the next painting session. This palette is great for thinning your paints and using them over a long paint session, but very bad for paints where the consistency needs to be precise, such as with contrast paints or inks. Conversely, the Choreography Wet Palette has almost the exact opposite positive and negative traits. I found the paint did not separate on the palette at all, and it allowed me to control how much moisture I needed to add to the paint to get the consistency I was looking for. When I sealed the wet paint in and came back to the wet palette later, the paint had seemingly been preserved without any visible separation or change in consistency. However, with the palette open to air as I was painting, paint would tend to dry a lot faster, meaning that I had a smaller window to work with it before it became unusable. This particular paper works more like a glass palette, but with a longer working time. This is still quite short for miniature painting acrylics as we work with paint that has a very short drying time when compared with other art paints. This palette paper is very good for the paints you would usually want to use on a dry palette but want a longer working time with them, such as inks and contrast paints. It works very well with your regular acrylics, but don't expect the paint to be usable in the same session if you leave it for half an hour or so. So, I like both and think both have faults. So I'm going to be using both of them when I am painting and with the two small palettes that works out great on my painting table. It also allows me to show my palettes to viewers when I stream or make painting videos such as this. To be honest, as a miniature painter, the dry palette is not going to see any use on my table. I'm never going to take paint out of my dropper bottles to use anywhere except the wet palette. And with the short drying time of miniature painting acrylics, even if it did a marvelous job when sealed, as soon as it's out in the air for 10 minutes, the paint will have been wasted. Where I may try and use it for the future would be for my oil washes and possibly excess metallics that I whip up using Vallejo Metal Air and inks. But alas, this is one module in the set as a miniature painter I find unnecessary. There is a little silver lining though, because as a miniature painter, I have a lot of games that use counters and the sections in these dry palettes work out quite well for storing them neatly. You have to be careful of where the seals come down from the lid, but they do make game storage quite easy. Mostly what I want to see for future modules are ways to make the set easier to transport and do my hobbying other than home. I imagine myself being able to paint and hobby during my work lunch break, or taking down the set to a cafe and sitting by the window to work on some minis. This would require the ability to take dropper bottles with me. At first I thought it was a really missed opportunity to not have a module that was sized to dropper bottles that so many miniature painting companies use, such as Vallejo or Army Painter. But then I realized the paint pot's real estate was being wasted. I wondered then if I could use the paint pots to hold the dropper bottles. And lo and behold, each paint pot snugly holds nine dropper bottles each, allowing you to transport 18 bottles with you. They fit in really perfectly, so I don't know if it was designed that way or a lucky accident, but I think it is great. Now, I would love a lid that could be slipped over the top with a more ergonomic handle to make transporting the module that much easier if I were to carry it by hand. Another module I would be very happy to see is a tray that is a little deeper than the wet palette to carry some tools. Miniature painters' tools are also quite miniature, so don't require much space. But the wet palette depth was not quite enough for that use. If it could come with a small cutting board fit to the size of the tray as well, then you could easily prepare small models wherever you take the module with you. 
finally, one more module for carrying 28 or 32 millimeter scale models. Anything bigger and the module I think would become very cumbersome, but having a tray with a few inches depth and a metal base so that the miniatures can be magnetized for safe transport would then put everything I needed into one handy modular kit. And I think offering wet palette paper that is similar to red grass palette paper made to the size of the Crydrophy palettes would also be ace. Okay, so if you got through all that spiel, then you may still be interested in the modular kit. If you are, then from the 15th of November, this painting kit will be available on Kickstarter. I have an affiliate link in the description below that will be active from the 15th, that if you use, gives me a little kickback at no extra cost to you. So what do you think of the Cryodrophy all-in-one modular art box? And what modules would you like to see in the future? Speaking with the creators, they want to continue working to improve the kit with future modules and accessories, and I, for one, am excited to see what they come up with. In the meantime, this kit has now become a permanent accessory on my painting table. Before we go, here's the finished model I was painting in the video, the Nomad Prospector from Infinity Deathmatch Tag Raid. Take care everyone, and see you in the next video.